Welcome to Tomorrow's Tech Today, bringing you the latest in technology, talent, and transformational change. With me, your host, Professor Sally Eaves. Fantastic. So without further ado, a warm welcome to the show, Jay. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Sally. Uh, it's great to be here and great to be talking to you. Fantastic. And as I said in the preview to this video, fantastic buzz at the moment around all things MWC 23 and around other areas that are developing supporting this too, such as Open RAN. Perhaps a great place to start is really to drill into this in terms of what's been happening in terms of Open RAN. Where is this going and kind of what point do you think we've reached to and landed at right now as we head into MWC? Sure, sure. Uh, as you said, MWC, this is like the family is the biggest telco event of the year. So we Absolutely. should be focusing on that. Um, and Open RAN is, is definitely a hot topic, right? And as you rightly said, there have been a couple of years, um, there's a huge hype that was going around. Um, this is truly a, an inflection point in the evolution of network infrastructure. Um, so traditionally, these closed networks um, are now opening up through disaggregation and where new players are being introduced um, to bring in those different innovative solutions much faster right, to deliver those experiences that the end users are looking for. Um, but if you look at the, the process or the progress of Open RAN, uh, it has been a slow start, right? But now, as you would see in the media and what the analysts are talking about, there's like a considerable momentum around this. Uh, a, a recent Deloro report, they even revised their estimation of Open RAN market by 2027 by around 20 percentage now by 15 it was 15 earlier now it's like 20 percent so you could see a huge uplift from that um and we have already seen the greenfield operators like rakutan and dish going ahead with the deployment but then the brownfield operators like the tier ones like the water phones of the world uh, are pushing ahead with various trials and, and limited deployments um but from a random perspective the focus has largely been on developing um the different components of open run uh, Rick being one of the key areas as well, and then building the ecosystems um, to to deliver those differentiated services to the operators. Uh, and then we can go on and on, like the Oran Alliance trying to build those standards and interfaces. Uh, then there are other players coming into the market. People, uh, I mean, the different companies have all fallen off the radar. So you would see like people who are like really focused on Open RAN and the organizations bringing up uh, their solutions into the market at the moment. I think you summarise that so well. There's so many different vectors of change in so many different ways affecting um, things at the moment. But one of the most positive ones, I do agree, is the power of the ecosystem. I mean, I think we th saw it through COVID, didn't we? The power of coming together to tackle challenges. Certainly MWC 22 last year, speaking to Raj in particular, we saw this kind of new resonance around what we can do by better collaboration. And I think now it's one of the number one leads for Open RAN really accelerating, as you were describing there. And in terms of those different entities that make up this ecosystem, you mentioned a couple of examples already, but for people who might be you know, less familiar with this, what, who do you see kind of the main players, but also that coming together we were talking about around standards, for example? Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know, you highlighted collaboration as the key word over there. Uh, and I think like everybody in the industry is recognizing that it's better together. You can drive your own agenda, but without the support, you won't be able to go far, right? So, um, so that is exactly what is happening with Open Run, and the ecosystem plays a huge role, as you mentioned. Um, so, if I, if I kind of like split it in a broad way, the operators, of course, who are deploying the network, who is delivering those services to their network to end users. Then we have the, the RAN vendors who are bringing in the, the radio interfaces like uh, the parallel wireless and, and, and the traditional vendors, right? And then vendors like us who bring in the other components, uh, RIC and the different applications. Then we do have testing solution uh, providers like Keyside and VRV. Um, then the application ecosystem is like now coming up really, really big. Even the small vendors are jumping in. So they bring in those different applications that sit on the top of the open run. Um, there is a, a huge dynamics happening over there. And then there are platform vendors like Indel and Rakuten, uh, which we have seen Indel with their Flex Run and Rakuten with their SimWorld. Then the, the big ones are the SIs, um, the systems integrators who are bringing this ecosystem together. Um, these are the IBMs and the Capgemini's and of the world, right? So these are, these are the different entities 
and it is still at a very early stage. So you would see a lot more dynamics with uh, different uh, actors from supply side as well as the operator side coming into this. Perhaps I couldn't agree more, particularly that SI role, I think absolutely critical. And then moving on a little bit to, to Juniper's role in this as well, I think one that's been right up there really helping to build this momentum around Open RAN is advocacy. And again, that collaboration, working together to address challenges and really accelerate this transition, but also help the understanding of all the different use cases this can support too. So if you were going to support, kind of describe that, how would you say Juniper's been kind of leading this charge in many ways? What's your key role and kind of what milestones have been along the way to to really actualize in that yeah we we embarked on this journey a journey a couple of years back right? trying to bring in uh, we saw uh, as i said this open runs and inflection points we said like there's an opportunity to go there of course we are not a ran vendor so we said like what is the next best thing uh or the key thing that could drive open ran is, is this ran intelligent controller so we said like okay let's jump on with it and then we had the deal with Netsia and we have started developing that RAN intelligent controller. And the past couple of years, we have been focusing on developing that ecosystem that we are talking about, right? We started with uh, Intel and Rakuten, and then we expanded our partnership with uh, the radio vendors like uh, Paddle Wireless and CASA Systems, and then working together with the, the ones that I mentioned, the VRVs and the, and the key sites. Um, and then now that now the focus is on applications. Um, but once we have all the stuff, of course, we needed to have customers to to try and test these things, right? And that's where we have been working with Vodafone, Turk Telecom, uh, and several other tier one operators. Um, and and then we are like developing these use cases, as you mentioned, and developing those applications for use cases, whether it's X apps or R, R apps on the uh, non real time and the near real time. Rich as well. So that has been our focus so far. Um, we have been continuing to work with all the leading operators trying to deliver the promise of open brand, so to speak. Uh, and that's what we are working on at the moment. Excellent, excellent. I love that. And great examples of work as well about getting more people involved in this, like the STK side of things as well. I think it's super, super yeah, important. Yeah, it really yeah. is. That, that is important to get the the other developers to expand um, exactly. on what they're built in, right? So the SDK is also an important role, point that you uh, that you just pointed out. Great. Absolutely, no problem at all. And kind of kind of bringing these different aspects together. You know, I talk about shared value business quite a lot, and I'm really you know, passionate about the fact that we can bring together impact for kind of business innovation, but also societal innovation at the same time. I think when we look at the progress of Open RAN, again, this is being supported by evolution in business models as well. And as part yeah. of that, again, greater collaboration. I think really exciting news there on this front, obviously with Juniper and IBM. I wonder if we could drill into kind of what's happening there and the MOU an announcement that's just coming through yeah yeah so this is a key milestone uh i'll take a bit back as well in terms of the business models and we are kind of approaching all the different possibilities right because uh this is still an exploration phase um and, and we have done that with rocket time with the same world launch and app store on the top of that and then the key milestone as you mentioned is the one that we are doing with the ibm um so this is where we are integrating our near real-time and non-real-time rig with IBM's like Cloud Pack for Network Automation or CP4NA for the GeekSpeak uh, solution to deliver this um, pre-integrated uh, open brand solution. Uh, and what happens with this collaboration is like we'll be working with integrating to even other RAN vendors um, together with IBM in addition to our direct approach. So, uh, you know, we this is the co-optation kind of model that we are using over here. Uh, and the solution also combines the application space, the XAPs and the ARAPs, as well as some elements of our SMO um, to deliver those full orchestration for all the applications that uh, IBM and us are working on and also the third-party vendors, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, all in all, this, this kind of provide a, a future opportunity to expand our ecosystem even further. Uh, and as I said, like, you know, these business models need to evolve uh, we still have our direct to customer approach, and that's what we have been doing with the Vodafone and Turk Telecoms uh, as a trial show. But we are, this is something that we are really excited about, uh, especially now that MWC is around the corner. Oh, absolutely. Count, countdown is on, isn't it? And I think also, you know, with other recent news from IBM around the expansion of their partner um, program as well, again, I think the fit across this collaboration is so, so strong. Again, going back to that power of the ecosystem, really excited to see that. And also the technology convergence is bringing together as well, which I think is super important. 
Definitely. And IBM is, has been a strategic alliance partner for us. Like, and, and it's not just in this area, in many other areas that we've been working closely. Uh, this this showcases like you know our thought leadership and the forward thinking uh, in the in the open RAM space. Uh, and also uh, this is a testament to like how we are expanding our ecosystem. I keep on coming back to the ecosystem bit because I think it is not just the operators, it is also the enterprises now looking into open RAM. As when private 5G comes into the picture, it is going to be huge. Then there are areas like sustainability where we want to bring in more sustainable solutions. And then some of the use cases like energy efficiency and other uh, others are also really driving that agenda in the RAM space. So really, really excited um, for the future. And as I said, we will be showcasing some of these at Mobile World Congress uh, uh, pretty soon now. Absolutely. I, I, I can't wait to see these as well and to explore some of these announcements in, you know, in person on site as well at the demos. I think it's been really exciting, but also looking forward at the trajectory ahead as well. So building on this ecosystem collaboration, building on this cloud native, you know, active intelligence we're bringing to the fore here and this tech integration and really moving forward with Open RAM with all the benefits this is going to bring. So if you were going to kind of summarize what's next for Juniper and ORAN, kind of what would that be? And perhaps we can close with a final kind of a little teaser about what to expect on site at MWC 23. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, yeah, for us, like the, of course, we need to strengthen our rig platform further, right? You know, as more and more uh, specifications are coming out. So that, that work will continue. Then the application ecosystem. Now the focus is largely on, of course, you have the platform, you have the ecosystem. Now tell us like, what, what, how are we going to make money? Uh, what are the applications? That, so that's what we are going to focus on. Then the service management and orchestration bit. I mean, of course, you have all these different aspects. How do you manage and orchestrate the network on the top of that? Uh, so these are these are the key areas. Uh, and for MWC, like you know, we are going with the theme of uh, experience. Our we have the strategy on experience versus networking. We are expanding that to experience the network of the future now because the demands from the customers are. We want to change, but we need to make sure we are addressing the future needs as well. Um, so that's where we are focusing on. We are bringing in some nice cool demos around Oran and Rick and, and several other portfolio elements like our Cloud Metro, our data center solutions, our managed services. Um, we are really bringing our XX to talk to our customers, uh, come and visit Juniper. And it's, it's fantastic. And we are really excited to see people there, hopefully this time without masks so that we can recognize people more. <laughs> Behind the Absolutely. Mask. Oh, I love that. Definitely. It's, it's that, that's the other thing. Again, we talk about ecosystem, but that beauty of coming together in person, you can't beat it again. You're, I absolutely love it. And I think you summarise that so so nicely in terms of everybody watching and listening right now, you know, experience the future of that network today. I mean, honestly, that's where we're going. And I love the fact that as part of the trajectory, that embedding as sustainability considerations is truly by design. So look out for something from me at the Juniper booth on that very subject too. So absolutely another sneak peek of what everyone can look forward to. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to like, and if you are there, like, please drop in and we would love to show you around as well. Thank you. I will do it. Thank you so much, Jay. Honestly, a pleasure to speak to you and a pleasure, everyone, for joining us today. So stay tuned for more Live with Juniper at MWC 23. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. Thanks for listening to this episode of Tomorrow's Tech Today. If you enjoy what we're doing, please subscribe to us and leave a review. It really means a lot. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and see more behind the scenes video footage on YouTube. Thanks for listening.